Have you ever wondered how researchers actually pick their targets and find CVEs? Recently, I was asked to give advice to how to find CVEs and also how to decide which projects are worth researching. In this video, I will share with you the process that I had with DirectUs, a great open source data management platform that I stumbled upon just by googling around and using Docker Hub. And after going to its website, one of the first things that stood out to me is this, the impressive list of clients that Erectus has, which also includes TripAdvisor, Adobe, Mercedes-Benz, um, Walmart, T-Mobile, and some other brands that we are all familiar with, which means that finding a vulnerability here may have a huge impact. Now, the second thing that I did was to go to the resources and read blogs, case studies, communities, and to understand better how this company works. After this, I went to GitHub in order to get more transparency about the code base of this product, which is most of it written in TypeScript. As you can see, many contributors, which means that many people uh, is pushing code to this repo and also to see how well updated this product and as you can see 12 hours ago was the last uh, code that was pushed to this repo. Now after this I really love to see the security policy of the company and the good news is that Directas has a security policy because many other products don't really have it. Now, yeah, they say here that if you find a bug or a vulnerability, just uh, report to this address. You can see many different vulnerabilities that reported and closed to this product. And I usually uh, really love to read about the last vulnerabilities that the product has because it tells me about the the potential vulnerabilities that I can find here. For example, this blind SSRF on file import. We can understand which API here is vulnerable and how to trigger this vulnerability. And remember this one, this API of files import, because we are going to tackle it uh, right away. Now, except for YouTube, the other thing that I really love to do is to go on Fofa and see how many instances of this product I can find in the wild. So let's see. And 85,000. It looks like a lot, but let's try to eliminate the false positives. And this one looks pretty string and we still have 68 results which is a lot and as you can see it's also popular all around the globe almost which looks really good and valuable to me now the last thing that I do is to go on direct us in YouTube because maybe here I can find tutorials and see many user comments and get another picture. Now in YouTube it has thousands of subscribers, many videos for how to interact with this direct as CMS. Now at this point this product looks a pretty good option to me because we saw that it's a very popular product used by many big companies. We saw that we can find here that this product has security policy with well updated code base and it has already many CVEs written before, many instances all around the world and probably we have here some great guides to understand how to set up this product and to play around. 
Now, from here, after we did all those checks, let's just look for the quickest way to set up our lab. Let's go to the right test documentation. And it looks pretty good to me. And here we have this Docker Compose file that all we need to do is just to configure what direct us image we want, um, some volumes on the file system, our port, some secrets like our username and password, and we are good to go. So let's hop over to our Kali machine, and I already prepared the Docker Compose file. As you can see, I have here the um, not the latest version for right now, but it was the latest version of Directus at the time that I did my security research. Now we configured here admin chucks.io and the chux is our super secret password. Now let's just run this instance. It may take a minute. And so far, it looks good. One more moment. And we are good to go. Server started at this address. Now let's go to um, our local host. It was this port. Now we need to log in and our password. Let's sign in. So now that we have our lab up and running, I usually just simply love to go through every single feature and functionality that the app offers. And in this case, we are going to test the file library with the import file functionality. And we have two options. The first one is to just simply browse through my local machine and upload a file. The second option that we have here is to use the import file from URL. So here, for example, let me just give on google.com And we have this file here that the directus just grabbed from google.com, of course. This is the name on the disk. And we will just download it. And here. This is the file. And yeah, this is google.com that Looks like Directus did sort of wget or curl and downloaded it locally to the server. Now, we also can test different addresses. And of course, that in this case, we are going to try SSRF with this request here. And instead of google.com, let's just try um, going to localhost and to the port of directus and looks like we are blocked with 503 service unavailable message so this is a simple ssrf mitigation technique and i did try different kind of payloads in here but let me just show you what Directus um, said when I reported to them because they just provided a great explanation that I want to show you in this video. Now, instead of just showing you the winning payload that let me access localhost, I wanted to first see how the company triaged my report for bypassing their SSRF mitigation. So let's just step over to the security advisory in GitHub of Directus and look for my report. And it's this one, SSRF loopback IP filter bypass. So here, you can see that this, for example, 
is a winning payload that lets us just simply access to um, the local host and bypass their mitigation. And this is just great. You can see that one of the developers commented on this one and he's simply asking if all registered loopback devices shouldn't be blocked by this check here. So this check is simply just checking what OS network interfaces the local machine of the Rectus contains. And if one of them has the address equals to a specific IP, which in this case was um, 127.0.0.1, it will block the request. And here Brainslug commented that the result of this check is exactly this one. It's info.address equals to this address. But as you saw here, we can put different address and it won't be blocked because instead of doing info.address equals to this IP, they need to check info.cidr and to block the entire range. By this simple check, they will block every SSRF bypass technique that tries to go to localhost. Now, back to our Kali machine, if we will just here change the address to the same one that I was putting in the post, in the report itself, and let's send it. Here, we get 200 OK with the correct JSON that the operation was successful. And let's go to this again. And we see that this file was created. Let's just download it. And here, as you can see, this is the SSRF result that we can access loopback and bypassing the mitigation. Now, a small bonus that I want to make here is to show you another vulnerability that I found by accessing the users and going to the admin. Of course that I don't have permissions, but here in the comments, I, as you can see, I already played a lot with this, but here if we will try to, let's do a test, and let's try to put um, a script tag, and it's automatically deleted after I'm putting the first character after this. Now, let's just do a submit here. And we have the test. Let's go back to burp. And let's find the request. Here, this one. Let's send it over to the repeater. And here, instead of test, let's just make an image. Source is x, the classic payload, let's send, we have again 200 OK, let's refresh the page, mm -hmm. comments, and here we go, we have this test with the error image here, See, yeah, just like the payload that we was putting in the burp. Now, if we put some random text and then try to type something else with a script tag, so yeah, it means that the rectas are well aware to the dangers of XSS. And when I went to the uh, GitHub account and read all the XSS tickets that uh, the rectas received, so they really did a good job with taking care of XSS vulnerabilities. 
but you can also see here the content security policy that is pretty good actually and even that I could bypass um, some of their mitigations by just sending it over with burp with image tag I still couldn't escalate to uh, real XSS. I couldn't run JavaScript due to this content security policy, the CSP. So I pretty much had only HTML injection without any impact. So I tried different things um, to escalate it from there. And I found out that instead of just putting an image and trying to, you know, do the classic um, on error uh, and then some uh, alert or these payloads I can do something else if I can put a form with method for example um, post and action to uh, some page for example then I can really actually um, ran kind of almost JavaScript. It's not a JavaScript, it's just the request that is being sent over and unauthorized. Mm, probably I have a problem with the token. Let's go here. Yeah, the token was changed. Let's change it here again. And okay. Now, if I have the form here, it means that I will be able to send request on behalf of the admin user if he gets into his uh, comments. Now, of course, that we can see the form, but if we will inspect it, so here the action and the method, but the form is empty. But you can still put some other um, uh, hidden input fields uh, so the user will not see, of course, the field itself. But this way, if we go to users um, and the admin wants to create another user, invite user, create user, he has to fill this, to fill this form. So you can put just the, um, the email and password of the user that you want to create and put a hidden form in the comments and let the admin trigger this form. And this is my second CVE on Directus. Now, I really want to say that that's it for this video, but I really hope you'd start your security research too and see how much you can learn from the process itself even if at the end you don't register a CVE. You still learn a lot from trying to bypass content security policy or bypassing classic SSRF mitigations with some cool techniques. Um, if you want more uh, research videos in the future, just drop a comment and I'll make more about other uh, vulnerabilities that I found and the process that I had in order to find them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.